Today I'm going to show you a few tools that I use to build websites on high level like a pro. So let's just dive straight into them. The first is Dribble and Awards. Let's say that I was building a website for a photographer and I didn't know where to start or like what sort of approach I wanted to take. Before I start building a website, I wanna see what is it that I have envisioned in mind or some ideas that I could take from different sites to build something on my own. In this case, as I mentioned, I typed photographer website and as I started scrolling, there's two sites that came to mind or that popped my attention and it's these two right here. So of course, photography by the very nature of that business is very visible. So if I was building a website for a photographer business on high level, I want to make sure that the website captivates, strikes attention, that is very unique. So these two right here very much capture that or did that for me. If I click this website right here, what I would do is, and what you can do as well, is as I'm looking through these sites, I like to take note of what are things that are striking my attention, that are piquing my curiosity, and is it something that I can integrate myself into my high level websites. Second tool that I like to use to build websites like a pro is the coolers that color palette selector. A lot of times the businesses that I'm working with already have colors that they've picked for their brands. But in other cases, some businesses have a little bit more flexibility and they ask me to help them choose their colors. Now, a cool site that I like to use is this one right here. I have a color palette generator. What's cool is that when I hit the space bar, I get new color combinations that work well with each other. I can hit the space bar again. If I wanted to add another color, I could just click this right here. If I wanted to just get rid of them, I could just do that right here something cool is that if you select this icon right here you'll see how this would look like on an actual website or how these colors would work with each other so in this case it gives you a visual representation this is how it would look like on a software dashboard or this is what it would look like on an actual website so you get a general idea if these colors work well with each other now the third tool that i like to use is the contrast checker in that same site so let me just go back here now when you're building a website on high level or just a website in general you want to make sure that the colors that you pick not only look cool but also work well with each other so what you can do is go to here in tools and go to the contrast checker and before you start building a website with two colors that don't work well with each other that make it harder for your prospect to read the information what you could do is run them through the contrast checker right here so let's say my two colors was this one right here and this one right here, you see that I have a very low contrast score, which means that it's gonna be hard for users to see text. And these two colors are very similar to each other. So what you can do to fix it is of course, pick a different color. What you can also do is click this right here and then make it so that you can just adjust the text color or the background color. I could just click this right here and I would get of course a combination that works well with each other, white on blue. You see that there's a very high contrast score. It works well for small text, for large text. The next tool that I like to use is one that helps you with mockups for websites. And this could be Figma or Canva. In this case, I am on Canva. And the reason why I'm showing you this is that before you start building a site for a client, you want to make sure that both you and the client have an understanding of what the feel and the look of the website would be. Now, one of the first websites that I built on high level was for an interior designer. And even though she gave me a lot of information as to what she wanted, the colors that she wanted to use, and even sample websites. When I took this information and built her a site because I hadn't shown her a mockup or a preview, there was a lot of adjustments that needed to be done. Basically, the website had to be redone. So you want to make sure that if you're building a website for a client, you have a tool like Canva or Figma where you can quickly add a design. So you see that this is just a design on Canva and you can very easily add and edit stuff. So when you show this to a client, this will not be the finished version, of course, and you don't necessarily have to build the entire site. This is just to get a feel and a visual for what the colors, the images would look like so that you avoid making the mistake that I just mentioned to you earlier. The next tool that I use is Photoshop for graphic design. So one thing that a lot of high level users say about my websites when they see my sites is that they really like the visuals or graphics that I have done. And for instance, this graphic right here, we actually built from scratch. So right now I am on Photoshop. You see that this is what the graphic looks like. You see that I have different layers, different stuff. What's cool is that I can change stuff around depending on what I need. And because I built these from scratch and I have different layers, I can customize them specifically to how I want them or what the client needs 
components are. So if I wanted to change the color of some specific components in my graphics, because I built them from scratch, I can very easily do that as you see right here, and then very easily be able to add them to my sites. If you have great copy paired up with a visual that helps illustrate the point, the example would make it so that a prospect understands and actually gets that specific piece of information and more likely that they actually stay engaged with the content of the site and take the next action to buy or book a call. The next tool is ChatGPT for copywriting. And I'm gonna show you a sample prompt that I created right here for this video. I'm not gonna read through all of this. You can pause the video if you want, but essentially I am asking Chad to help me with a copy for a chiropractor in Sacramento. And I give him some information. The key is that I make it very specific as to what I'm looking for. So here I say that I want the copy to be clear, engaging, simple, highly converting, avoid complex terms, and actually highlight specific pain points that a prospect looking for that service might have so that the copy that we do add on this site makes it more likely that somebody actually converts. Now, of course, chat will not give you perfect answers. So what I like to do and you can do as well is keep playing around with it, kind of like molding that until you get copy that you're very happy or satisfied with. And then I would very easily be able to take this copy and then paste it for my client website. The next tool is kind of like my secret sauce and it's custom effects with my Notion doc. If you've watched my channel in the past, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you might even be using using it right now to build websites like a pro. If you don't know what this is, it is a document that I use every day to build better websites for my clients, for myself, and you can take a website on high level that looks average and take it to the next level. This right here, this effect that you see moving, it's tutorial 3.4 or 3.7 right here. And if I keep scrolling down, you see that this would be tutorial 1.2. If I keep scrolling down, this would be 1.1. And then down here, this would be tutorial 3.4. Point three right here. Now the way to use these effects is not just to add a bunch of stuff all at once to a website because it might overwhelm a user, but the magic happens when you use them in strategic ways. So for this site, for instance, the fact that I use something that captures someone's attention makes it so they more likely to engage and keep scrolling on this site. Now, another great way to engage users to a site is having high quality visuals, visuals that stand out, that captivate the attention, such as the ones that you see right here. Now that is where the next research comes into play and that's Pexels and Unsplashed. And what these two sites are sites where we can get stock photos that are royalty free. So if I was building a site for a photographer, I could just type the term photographer right here. And if I search this right here, you'll see that I have access to high quality visuals. The key is to pick visuals that don't look generic and don't look that were taken from a stock photo site like this one. Also something very cool is that you can also get access to videos right here. And if I was to just preview this, this is what it would look like. So this is great in the case that you're working with a business that might not have the best high quality visuals. So you can use sites like this to make sure that you take your client's website to the next level and have visuals that engage prospects and keep them captivated and help convert as well. The last tool that I like to use is royalty free icons and I get these from Flaticon or Freepik. So here I am on Flaticon or Flat Icon. I don't know how it's pronounced, but let's say I was building the testimonials section of a website. What I could do is type the word five stars right here. And if I hit enter, you'll see that I get different icons that I could use on my site. So what I could do is click on an icon just like this, download it and then be able to use it on my site and have graphics that are engaging and help my website look more professional and easier to understand as well. I hope that this video was valuable. And if you're interested in getting my Notion doc to build websites like a pro, websites that stand out, you can click the link in the description and get a copy of it yourself.